Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Atiyullah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahl and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and that we took a path in which to be nothing. Well, this dunya tries to make us everything. And always a reminder for myself that these are the schools of adab and good character. This good character draws us the rahmah and nearness to Allah and the nearness of Allah when He begins to teach the servant about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And the good character because the dunya is always changing our character. The dunya's whole purpose is to counter the heavenly character and to become a creature of dunya instead of a reality from paradise. We've discussed many times but a reminder for myself that Rijalullah and the training of the servants of Allah is to walk into an environment that is filled with cracks but to see the good in it. So to walk into an environment that has many, many defects but to see the good in it and to bring the good of it out. That when we're under the training of a shaykh, the shaykh takes you through his own training. Means that it's, it's adulthood to walk in and see something beautiful although the wall may be completely filled with cracks. But any child can walk into an environment and find all the problems. The ability to find problems is of the worst character, not the best. That's why schools and universities they teach you the worst of character, right? They begin to teach you to debate, debate the teacher, debate and analyze whatever's being said, what they call constructive criticism. So they teach you on how to be a professional critique, where tariqah comes and teaches you they don't need any criticism. It's not for you to criticize anything, take actually the more difficult path in which to find the goodness in something. Because we're not living in paradise where we're trying to identify one snake. We're living in the land of snakes trying to identify one piece of paradise. Everything's bad, everything is difficult around us, everything is upside down. If the shaykh wasn't trained like that there's no way that he could sit and deal with people. Because he said, no I only want the best and the most purified, most perfected then come sit with me. <laughs> no, so the teaching was, no Allah going to send a broken shovel and then He's going to send you a broken bucket in life. And they're going to then tell you that dig for your rizq with this broken shovel and empty that water with this broken bucket filled with holes. And that was his training from his shaykh, that if we give you this bucket and say empty this ocean, you immediately start doing it. The task that given to you, the life that given to you whatever is coming towards you is the broken bucket. People are wondering, oh is the shaykh going to give me like an actual bucket and then tell me to go to the ocean and empty it? You know these are <laughs> analogies, right? Because your normal 
constructive criticism <laughs> that was on the email. Critical thinking is not allowed shaykh, constructive criticism is not allowed. Say, it's allowed in school but if you want to reach Allah no. Because rijal and to reach to a station towards the understanding of perfections. Well anyone could look at the bucket and said it's filled with holes. But now where's the miracle of faith that, Ya Rabbi how am I going to get all this water out? And my whole life's battle is this, what is this? How is this task going to happen? How is it possibly going to happen? At beginner level no, it's not going to happen. And you're going to be stuck on why is there so many holes, why is there so many problems, what are all these difficulties and your eyes and mind only see the difficulty in life. All of the obstacles most of which box you in and you put them there, they don't really even exist. If people don't play with you as a child you grow up thinking, oh if I'm not in this particular group it's not going to happen and this set of friends they don't talk to me. Make a new set of friends, make your box a different box. Then when they're trained that every task they're given don't think about it, do it. Our life was the struggle to Allah belongs the victory. How am I going to make my rizq when my shovel is broken, my, my abilities are not correct? Means do your amal, do your actions, do what Allah has asked of you, listen to their advice and keep digging in your life. And critical thinking and critiquing try to avoid. For if you can't silence the mouth and silence the head, the thinking that I'm going to think it, then I'm going to say it and I'm going to criticize about it, all the garbage has come out. And Allah says, from what they say in their mouth nothing compared to what's in the heart. Means if I'm allowing this to escape from my mouth and I took this waswas and whispering that was in my head. I gave it a life and I gave it a power by coming out of my mouth. I gave a lot of power to this waswas and then I became a servant to waswas. Because he's, oh this is a good microphone for me, whatever I say in this guy's ear he's going to set out through his mouth. And then we live a life of critiquing, criticizing everything. No faith will grow, no sabr will grow, nothing will grow. It become like a sand instead of a fertile soil to grow faith. What happens in the sand? You just end up just walking and dying in there. Nothing nourishing will come from that reality and they come and they teach the character. That the character was to identify, yeah there's many things wrong but let me rise above it and give 70 excuses for something good. And this is a hadith of Prophet If you see something wrong with your brother find 70 excuses of something good. Because of course we can identify everyone's problems but how can you sit down and actually find something good in somebody? Not what they've done wrong or the actions that you don't think are particularly interesting. That becomes our life training if we can train to see the goodness in everything and that every test that comes in our life, the Ya Rabbi give me the ability to understand the goodness of what this test is in my life that's coming towards me. Not that it's a difficulty that you find all the cracks and all the problems with it but what is the goodness and the hikmah of the wisdom of everything that comes in my direction. And then we begin to rise above the situation that's around us in life and that situation influencing our character and then that dunya grabbing you and bringing you in. 
when you live by it and when you talk by it and you become from it, this dunya begins to suck you into it. To rise above it is the station of Rijarullah and the training that Allah are asking from us. The life becomes much more difficult, surroundings around us are much more intense, much more difficulty around. Look at everything and see a wisdom and a goodness within it. They saw a pandemic, got fear, went out and bought lots of toilet paper. But you stop, you see a pandemic and you say, this is an opportunity for people to slow down, to stop, to reconsider what's important in their life. As if Allah giving all of creation a time out. So it means in everything there must be a hikmah and a wisdom. But Allah says, none will accomplish it except the people of tafakkur. Throughout Qur'an Allah saying, these realities, these secrets of Qur'an, these secrets of Ayatul Kareem, they won't be accomplished except by the people of tafakkur and contemplation. Because for everything is, is for them to slow down. And they ask, is chess allowed as a game? A chess is our whole life. Don't make fast moves, think, look at the field of the game that you're playing in life and that everything I'm about to say and everything I'm about to do, it's like a piece on this chess game. This word is going to move this piece this way. This action going to move this, this way, am I going to be under attack by that move or am I improving myself in those moves? And this was from Imam Ali that contemplate everything. Before you make any move think it out, contemplate it. In your mind play how that's going to happen. So then they taught how to silence the mouth. When you see something and you begin to, let me just tell this person what they did wrong, how they're wrong, what's this wrong, what's this wrong. The people of tafakkur they, tafakkur they slow down and they think, why should I say it? Will I say it and the person will be happy or will this person now become angry for what I said and as a result of what I said they're going to now fight me, then it's going to become a whole conflict. You played this whole chess game in your mind you say <laughs> and walk away and they learned how to stay silent on everything. If they don't see a benefit for it, they don't see a hikmah in it, why say it, why do it? If it's only going to lead to, to confrontation and our whole life was to be trained like that, why have to say something? And if I say are the people going to be happy with these comments? Or they're going to throw a comment back at me and then this becomes conflict. If people don't do that at home then imagine they don't do it at work and they don't even run nations like that. Everything now is just critical, critiquing, fighting, then killing. Because nations they have many different uh, ways to resolve their anger. If it doesn't Allah would just say, if they don't change the condition within themselves nothing will change for people. I don't change the environment until people change their own condition. So tariqah comes to teach and to remind us, oh it's easy to find all the problems. It's a saintly path to look for the good and to overlook the problem and always try to find the good, the wisdom, the, the benefit of what Allah has as a surrounding. The benefit of a person, a place, a thing, everything has a benefit and a hikmah. And it's our obligation on this path to find the best of what Allah is sending for us and to be patient. When we learn how to be patient, be patient, be patient, this characteristic opens Allah's rahmah and mercy. Because these are the characteristics that Allah finds to be pleasing. I said before, it's not our amal that Allah raises us by. It's, it's, it's not our actions 
that we pray and Allah is so happy by how much we prayed and how great we prayed or how much we gave, how much we fasted. But it's the good characteristic that Allah opens rahmah and mercy. That based on these good characteristics, the, the ability to not harm somebody. They said that, how did you know as a Muslim is that you're safe from their hands and from their mouth. Prophet didn't describe a good Muslim as somebody who prayed a lot, his qirat was perfect, he gave lot of zakat and he went 30 times hajj. But he said a good Muslim is someone whom you're safe from their hand and from their mouth. Means that you're with a good character person. This one is, is in the ocean of taslim to Allah Otherwise his actions are of what value? If the character didn't become good, those actions were not the reward. They were merely a means in which to have good character. Allah doesn't need your salah but we were supposed to pray to have good character. If the praying didn't give us good character, you're praying wrong. We were supposed to give so that we would be compassionate and feed other people. If we gave and we're, we have no empathy, well we gave wrong with the wrong intention. So the usul, they weren't the goal, it was a means towards the goal and the goal was, Adabana Rabbi fi ahsanam fi tahdeeb. The Prophet said, Allah sent me, Adabana Rabbi fi ahsanam fi tahdeeb, they give me the best of character and the, what's tahdeeb? Asana Rabbi fi ahsan fi tahtib that Allah Prophet teaching that Allah sent me to perfect the character and good manners. Not that everybody making a, a certain amal but those amals, those actions they were supposed to have resulted in good character. So the person you don't say they pray a lot but mashallah they have such amazing character. Then you would research back, oh maybe their praying is so good, their zakat is so strong, they make their pilgrimage, they do their zikr. But now everybody forgot about the end result and the fixation is on the actions, on the means. That I did this and I want to post it, I did 15 hajjas and I want to post it, I did this. And they're reminding for ourselves, for myself, it's the good character that counts for Allah if what we're doing and the character is not changing then we have to revisit what we're doing and focus on the character inshaAllah. Try not to say bad things, try not to get into arguments, try to refrain from critiquing and criticizing when you know the result will bring out an action that's not positive and an environment that's not positive. Allah loves those whom makes peace and keeps the peace. Whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's in the masjid or on the street or in the community. Allah doesn't praise the one whom makes problems and fitnas and fights and arguments. But muslihun, the one who brings always peace. So that must be a person who's always quiet. A peaceful person characteristic is they're quiet. For every word they talk there's going to be a conflict. They realize that and they say, better for me to stay quiet and that they keep the peace. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.